We have no piano.
Well, welcome to Revival. Amen. 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 What a wonderful day. Today we start Revival. We have already had a Revival service this morning, and it was just awesome. And we want to just say how great it's going to be this week with our former pastor, Lane, and Judy Sargent are going to be with us all this week. They'll be with us again tonight at 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock throughout the week, Monday through Thursday. And last week, we celebrated Mother's Day, which was a wonderful time. And uh, we gave out CDs. If you happen to receive a CD that didn't work right, we have some new ones in the front office. And you can get those right after the service. With that being said, we have a very special, very special uh, person that we want to introduce to you today once again. We just want to bless her and welcome her, uh, especially today. We haven't heard from, from Sister Liz in a little bit. I asked her if she'd come and greet you this morning, give you maybe an update on Virgil and what's happening. We know they have, they have been going through it, but we have been with them, amen, in prayer. So I want Liz to come and greet you. Aren't you don't you love Liz Amberger this morning? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless you. Almost two months ago today, Virgil had a terrible attack was taken to the hospital and it was just devastating he fractured his pelvic bone and they found that cancer had spread from his prostate all into the bone and just it was terrible and we thought for maybe a week or two there that he was going to die right then it was so critical but you know there is a God who holds our lives in his hand and when his people pray like you prayed there's all the difference in the world. And the doctors say, get ready to die, but the church says, get ready to live. Jesus said, I have conquered death. We serve a God who has conquered death and God has our lives in his hand. Don't you worry what the devil brings your way. God is greater than, he always will be. He knows where his children are and he takes care of us. Virgil's progressing every day. Our grandchildren came home. Sarah came in from Savannah and Adam came over and they put out Virgil's tomato crop yesterday, 92 tomato plants. And we have the other eight still there. And some of you have already expressed worry that you won't get any free tomatoes this year. But don't believe it, that's a lie from the devil because God is alive. And he believes in growth and he believes in a church like this this church is so full of power when they pray that the doctors just say we can't understand. And when the people bind together and you pray for things, God answers prayer. Don't be weary in well-doing. Let's get in this revival. Let's see souls saved. Let's tell them this may be our last revival. Let's get God's blessings in our lives. And let's do His will and look for His coming. I don't want to keep Amen. Thank you, Liz. Well, don't you love Liz again? Let's give her a wonderful Stratford love clap, I guess you call it. I'd like to ask all of you to stand if you would. We want to thank you. If you're visiting with us today at Stratford Heights, thank you so much for being with us. You are our special guest. We want you to know that we really look forward to knowing you, meeting you right now. We want to ask all of our regular tenders, if you will, just get out. And your responsibility is to make sure you meet at least one. But let's look for as many uh, of our guests as we possibly can. And if you find a few regular folks along the way, let, let them know you love them too. God bless you. Let's get out. Find as many people as you can. To let them know they're in the right place this morning. God bless you. Yeah. 
like a raging fire burning my soul baptize me with the Holy Ghost like a raging fire burning my soul baptize me with the Holy Ghost like a raging fire burning my soul baptize me with the Holy Ghost like a raging fire burning my soul baptize me
in the firmament. Praise Him because He is a mighty, awesome, powerful God. Praise Him on the cymbals. Praise Him in the choir. Let it ring. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise ye Lord. the Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. We lift you up. <laughs> you know what the Bible says? Yeah. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. If you and I will just get a hold of that truth this morning, my goodness, anything is possible in this place. He inhabits the praises of his people. That means, inhabit means he takes up residence. He sets his throne right in the middle. He, mo he comes from where he is to right here. How many feel and sense the presence of God in this house this morning? Listen to what Psalm 97 says. For the Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The, melt, the mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness. And listen, here's the good part. All the people oh. will see his glory. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Let it rain. Are you hungry this morning? David said, as the deer pants for the water brook, so does my soul thirst after you, O oh God. He goes on in verse 5 there and says, Why art thou cast down, O oh my soul? You believe in him, don't you? You believe in him. He's here this morning. Won't you just lift up your hands all, all over this house and just begin to thank the Lord and honor him for his presence that is here so strong and mighty. Lord, we honor you. We're thankful we're not just steeped up in religion. We're thankful this morning we not, we've not just got our little order and our little program, but God, we're here to get, today gathered in your presence. Lord, we believe in your miracle, mighty power that's here today. We believe that you can change lives, save those that are lost. And God, you can heal the brokenhearted. You can set the captive free. We believe that can happen not only in the future, but our faith is a right now faith. I'm believing right now chains are going to be broken and hearts are going to be set free in this house this morning. We're in revival. I said we're in revival. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. It's hot up here, Brother Sergeant. You're going to love it. <laughs> it's hot up here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you have a need this morning? You brought hearts that are in need today to a revival meeting. This week, we're going to be in revival every night. Starting this morning, we already had a wonderful service at 830, 1040, 6 o'clock tonight. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, we'll be in revival right here at Stratford Heights. Bring your friends, bring the unsaved, bring those who need, who need to be revived, who need a touch from the Lord. I'm believing for miracles, mighty miracles, and the power of God to be present in every service. I'm going to tell you something. We need it. We need revival. I need revival. I've come hungry and thirsty for revival. I want an old fashioned, Holy Ghost filled, gully washer, we used to call it. I want God to bless me, touch me, I want Him to open me wide open. I don't want anything to hinder or stop me from receiving from the Lord this week. How about you? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. We're going to pray over each of the needs that are represented here today. I saw Sister Vicky. Did I see you out here? Was that, is that right? There's Sister Vicky and husband. I'm so glad they're here. She's been going through chemo treatments and have you finished with them now? We're done. So now it's just, let's get back to being healthy and strong. And God is going to help you and strengthen you. 
Amen. We're praying for you. We love you guys. Good to see Tim. Tim Crow is here today. Tim, wave at us. Man, the Lord's got his hand on him, and he is doing well and smiling from ear to ear. So good to see him back in service today. And all of you, let's pray for each of the needs here. And of course, in this moment, we pray, as the Bible says, to seek the good and to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We also remember Israel. And how many of you know it's very important that we remember the United States of America? As never before, folks, we need God. We need God. I want you to help me. Let's pray right now for all of these needs. Father, as we come before you, Lord, we come humbly, but we also come boldly because of the grace that is ours through Jesus Christ. We ask you to minister from the front to the back, the left to the right in this sanctuary. Every heart, every hand that was lifted up, every home, every situation, we bring it to you today. You said cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. Lord, we know that your love is everlasting. We give you every need. We ask you to heal. We ask you to deliver. We ask you to give us guidance and direction. We ask you to provide. And Lord, we're believing tonight, thank, this morning. Thank you that, Lord, it's not up to us. It's not because of who we are, but it's because of who you are. And we honor you this morning. I thank you for people that are hungry and thirsting after righteousness this morning. Your promise is that we'll be filled. So we've come believing and we thank you. Lord, we seek the good and we pray for the peace of Israel. We ask you to touch her and minister now around her borders, protect her sons and daughters and her families. Minister your grace and love to your people, God, as we seek her good. We ask you to bless her, strengthen them and be with them. And God, we thank you for it. And Lord, we'll not fail to lift up the United States of America. God bless America again. Touch us and minister, Lord, to your people. We ask you to touch us in this most important election time. The Lord, you'd minister to your people today. Touch the remnant of those across this country from one, east, one coast to the other that still love you, that still call out your name. God, you've always got a people. And I believe there are people in the United States, the U.S. of A., that love you, that are serving you, that are obedient to your word, and are calling on you to help help in this time of need touch us minister your strength and grace lord cover this election let your will be perfectly done without hindrance or obstacle as we pray it all in the mighty name of jesus christ we don't seek our political preference lord we seek your perfect will and we ask it this morning in the mighty name of jesus christ and everyone together said amen Amen. Now, would you help me? Let's one more time give praise to the Lord this morning. I mean, let's do it right. Let's give him praise. Praise the Lord. Well, you can be seated if you can. We are thrilled to have with us Brother and Sister Lane and Judy Sargent, you're with us. I want them to wave at you. I won't make them stand again. Would you just give them a good Stratford Heights welcome back? Boy, you better, be, you better be ready. You better hang on to your pew this morning. 8.30 has already been set on fire, and you can tell in 10.40 we're on our way. God is doing something. God is moving. The Spirit of the Lord is here in a wonderful way. And I'm excited for the ministry and the word that's going to be given to us this week. We've set aside this time, it, not a more important time in the history of our church. It's actually been prophesied that we're preparing ourselves for a visitation of the Lord. And I'm believing we're already seeing that. God is moving. And I want you to prepare your hearts and be ready. This week, I want you to be in support. We need revival. I know we need lots of things and we're busy. As a matter of fact, we're busier than we've ever been. I realize that. I know there's a lot going on. Please look at your calendar. Mark off as much as you can to be here. Your church, this church, our heritage of faith here at Middletown needs, needs revival. And I'm asking for all of us to come as often and as many nights as we can to be in this revival. I'm believing the Lord's going to touch us. We usually don't have a crowd problem, so I'm not picking on you. I'm just wanting to tell you it's important that we all be here, if at all possible, this week. Cancel whatever you got going on. I never ask you to do that. I never impose on you to do that. I can't do this alone. 
our staff can't do this alone. Our workers and teachers and that 20% that they say, the, the Preto principle tells us 20% does 80, 100% of the work and 80% enjoy it. We need everyone. If we're going to do this thing and do it right before the coming of the Lord, we need everyone. And I'm believing that God's going to touch us all. We need you. We need one another. I need you. We need the support of one another. You need to pray for me. I need to pray for you. Can I get an amen out of this crowd? So I'm asking you to support the revival and be here as often as you can. Sometimes we get to feeling, oh, they won't know if I'm there or not. Yeah, we will. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, they were all gathered together in one mind, in one accord. When we're unified together, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 11, God said, now because this people is one, now nothing that they imagine to do will be withheld from them. Don't tell me we don't need you. We need you. And you need the church as well. So as we go before him today and, and offer our gifts, I would ask you and remind you that this morning and throughout this week, we're wanting to bless our evangelist that's here. If you don't know Lane and Sargent, then you must be new. They've come and done revival for us all. This is the ninth year that I've been the pastor of the church. And uh, you have been here every year. Somebody says, you know, we're going into revival again. Yeah, every year we have revival. A couple of different times throughout the year, we get them up here for one reason or another. We'll have a celebration. But revival is a time where we set aside and the ministry happens to the people. I'm just transparent with you. I could bring a bunch of flashy people. I could bring some of the evangelists that are well known. I could drop them, their buses could come by here and, or their jets could fly in and we could pay them a whole bunch of money to come in here and, and not know you, not love you, not care for you, preach the same message they preached on TBN or they preached at 10,000 other churches. But I love the text I received this last week as Pastor Sargent was sharing with me and he said, I've been walking the floor, I've been praying and preparing. He said, I believe this is going to be the greatest meetings that we have ever had in the history of these revivals in our church. Amen. All I know is that I was a young man. And I was searching for truth in my life. And I stumbled in the back door of the Harlem Park Church of God. And I was loved by these people. My daddy didn't have money. Dad's here. You didn't have a whole lot of money. <laughs> he did all right. He took care of us six kids. My dad wasn't a big tithe payer. He didn't serve on the council. My mom and daddy were not famous in the church. They had no Church of God connections. I was just a teenager sitting on the back pew. That man and that lady right there adopted me, took me into their heart, brought me into their home. He taught me how to preach. He taught me how to pray. He spent time with me. He mentored me, and he's a hero to me. I loved that man because he showed me God. And so you want to know why he's here? Because I have confidence in him. I have confidence in him. And I'm thankful. I am who I am today because God put people like this in my life. And so I honor him today as former pastor of this church. I never would have dreamed at 18 years old sitting on that back pew when you was bringing the house down, preaching and running the show. I would have never guessed that one day I would be introducing you and that I would be the pastor. God's got a great sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> but I'm thankful for them. I want us to bless them. I'm asking you to help me to bless them today, to honor the work they've done. They were pastors at our church how many years ago? It was 1980, 80 to 88. Eight years they served, and that was 35, 38 years ago. Goodness gracious, you're old. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no way. We love you. We honor you. And today we want to bless you. So help me to do that. Thank you to those as well who have come and prepared or ready to pay your tithe and those who are giving to our, our missions and our building program. God bless you. Father, as we come to you, we come humbly. We come thankful. We ask you to bless the ministry of Lane and Judy Sargent. 
I thank you that they are spiritual father and mother to me. I honor them. I pray, Lord, that you will use our hearts. And if we've ever been touched or blessed in these revival meetings, and if the messages have ever stirred us or touched us, that today, Lord, will show a thankful heart as well. Bless them through us. Meet the needs they may have in their lives. May it not just be an offering, but Lord, may it truly meet a need. We give you honor and we ask it to be more and abundantly more than they would dream or ask. In Jesus' name, amen. I hunger for you, Lord. I long to see your face. Let your glory fall around me. Check my secret place. I want to know you more than I ever have before. I hunger for you, Lord. Let me sing that again. I hunger for you, Lord. I long to see your face. Let your glory fall around me. Check my secret place. Lord, I want to know you more than I ever have before. Sing it. I hunger for you, Lord. Sing it. I hunger for you, Lord. I hunger for you, Lord. I long to see your face. Let your glory fall around me. Check my secret place. I want to know you more than I ever had before. I hunger for you. I really want to know you. I really want to know you. With all my heart to show you, I love you like I never have before. I really want to show you, I really want to show you. With all my heart to know you, I hunger for you. I really want to show you, I really want to show you. With all my heart to know you, I love you like I never have before. Lord, I really want to show you, I really want to show you. With all my heart to know you, oh Lord, I hunger for you, Lord. Really want to know you, Lord. I hunger for you, Lord. I hunger, Lord. I hunger. I hunger for you, Lord. I really want to know you. With all my heart to show you this. That I love you like I never have before. I really want to show you. I want to make love to you, Lord. With all my heart, I want to know you, Lord. I hope for you. And 
the train of his road it fills this temple as the angels gather round him
Give him praise right now, church. Give him praise. Pastor, I come in here this morning. I started setting up my stuff. And Esperanza, they were praying. And I walked over here. And I don't know what he was saying. But he pierced my soul. I come back over here. And this precious lady right here was singing with all of her heart. Next thing I know, I'm right there. We serve a mighty, mighty God. <laughs> and there's sometimes in life it feels impossible. But nothing is impossible. Sing it now.
Every chain of disappointment, every chain of despair, every chain of sin. If you believe it, let me hear you tell him about it and give him a loud praise with your hands and your voice. where the Lord says if you'll just move over I'll do what I want to do oh I've got a message to preach to you but if I don't get to it what's important is there are people in this house that need deliverance see <sighs> so you got to understand something folks what's going on in society It's not issues, it's not a revolution. The enemy has moved in to governmental places, public places, and he's creating chaos. I don't know if you've seen the Batman movie, but there's a place in the Batman movie where the Joker is hanging on the side of a building and Batman says, what do you want? He said, chaos. I asked the devil this morning, what do you want? He said, chaos. I'm creating it in the schools. I'm creating it in a public arena. It's not about a bathroom, folks. It's about chaos. It's about a destruction of the family and the family unit and Christian morals and Christian beliefs. It's not about those things. It's about chaos. And if you're not careful, the enemy will suck you into the chaos. Shoot. See, sickness comes into your life and it causes chaos. Marital problems develop, it causes chaos. Financial problems and hardships, chaos. See, the enemy gets you in chaos, you get your mind off of him. 
You got to clear your focus this morning. I said, you got to clear your focus this morning. Oh, God. You say, what are you doing? I'm waiting on God. Come on, come on. Because if I get ahead of him, I'm going to make a mess out of it. As I told him this morning, if I'm worrying about you thinking about what I preach and how I preach, I don't care. If I'm, de if I'm dealing with the fact that how you feel about how I preach, that doesn't matter. I don't care if you like how I preach or like how I shout or like how I jump or you don't, doesn't matter. What matters to me is God has taken himself a seat. He quoted the scripture a moment ago. He inhabits the praises of his people. And he talked about it. It actually means he sets up his throne and he sits down on it. See, a king doesn't make a decision until he's seated. And he said to tell you, he's seated. You know where he's seated? Good Lord. He is seated on your praise. He inhabits, he is seated on the praises of his people. You know what that's saying? Anything that's in this house he can take care of because he's the king. The king is in control. The king has everything in order. The king has all the power. The king is, does anybody know what I'm talking about in this house? But for those of you who have never been around this or may not know anything about it, this is called the presence of God. He inhabits the house he builds. He only visits the one you build. I gotta get that to you again. Listen to me. He will visit the house you build. He will inhabit the one he builds. I don't want him to show up and just ring my doorbell and come in for a cup of coffee. I want him to inhabit me, body, soul, mind, and spirit until I am consumed by the power and the anointing of God. You got to remember that the scripture says the anointing destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Now you got to understand the yoke. I'm preaching just a little bit. A yoke, when Jesus said, My yoke is easy, what they would do, they would take a piece of wood, carve it out to put over the back of two oxen so they could pull together, but they would also sand it, polish it, and make it smooth so it didn't irritate. See, life has irritated you. Oh, come on, the rest of you be honest. Irritated you. He said, but I have come to give you an easy yoke. What does that mean? That means that he's gonna give you something that fits. You see, uh-oh. Judy wants me to do this with my coat buttoned. Let me show you something. Two weeks ago, I couldn't do that. You know why it fits? I took on a hard yoke, and that yoke was to lose some weight. Now I can button it, I'm proud. What does that say? A suit that didn't fit, now fits. He may be needing to cut something off. He may be working on you. Something that nobody else knows about. Something that only you know about. Something that you're struggling with. Something that you, everybody looks at you and you look pious on Sunday, but you're doing something on Monday through Saturday you shouldn't do. He said to tell you, he came by to break that yoke and he's gonna destroy it. He's gonna tear it apart. He's gonna, oh, he's gonna rip it up. You better be glad I can't dance much. I'm out of breath already. Here's what he said to tell you. This is your day. You do not need to walk out of those doors until you're transformed. What does that mean? That means you're healed. That means you're delivered. Por eso, pario con celebro cotillo solato, quiebro de Dios sota. You say, what are you doing? I'm praying in the spirit. For those of you who don't understand, that's, that's why he gave me the Holy Spirit. From 2.30 this morning until 4 a.m., I prayed in the Spirit. Oh, I wanted to sleep. I was dead tired. 
In, South, in Alabama, it's called dog tired. But I prayed in the spirit, strength came into my body, and he said I was praying for you and 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 you. He said already, it's already in the throne room of God. It's already before him. It's already come up before him. If you need to be healed, here, oh, wait a minute. telling you this day, I have never left you, I have never forsaken you. Just because you have trials, that does not mean I'm not there. Just because you have sickness, that does not mean I'm not there. Have I not promised you that I would bring you through? And I am bringing you through. Look around, don't look back, look forward, because I have brought you here, and you are here today in my presence, and in my presence is healing, in my presence is deliverance, in my presence are answers, in my presence are direction. You are here today because I have brought you here by my spirit. You may have gotten ready, you may have prepared, but I ordered your steps, and the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. You are here by divine principle. You are here by divine intervention. Receive what I have for you in this house this day, says the Lord. Come on, give him praise. putting something in my spirit I got to do. So don't worry about it. You'll probably get out earlier if I had preached. You wouldn't get out that early, okay? Listen, when we were singing, he placed in my spirit the word purge. The word purge means to take something that does not belong there and get it out. He said, before I pray for anybody in this building, before his healing virtue will flow, before he does what he wants to do, he said, I've got to purge the people. I've never said this before in my life. He's got to purge the people. I want him to start with me. Anybody with me? Do I have any takers? Hold your hand up. Everybody put your hand on your heart. Say, Father, you know me better than I know myself. You know the times that I falter, that I fall, that I sin, I say what I shouldn't say, I do what I shouldn't do, I go where I shouldn't go, I watch what I shouldn't watch. Father, purge me, purge me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, I'm your child and I am open to you. I want to be your vessel that is cleansed and ready for use. Lift your hands and say thank you, Lord, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Everybody lift both hands. Honor his presence. See, because of corporate worship, we have created an atmosphere for him to work. Pastor, I don't know how we're going to do this. But everybody wants prayer, I'm gonna pray for. If it takes to six o'clock tonight, I'll still be here and preach tonight. 
This is one of those times now. Please understand me. Most of you know me. I'm not doing this because of me. I'm doing this because God has put something in me and I got to give it away. All I'm saying is if you want it. Whew. My Lord, folks. I'm going to need some altar workers help. I'm sure all of you are trained and everything's ready. Listen to me. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care if you need healing, deliverance, an answer, or you're in a dilemma, or your mind's confused, or whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, step out from your pew and walk up here right now. In the aisles, whatever. Fill up down here and then go up the aisles. Stay in the aisles, okay? Just stay in the aisles. That's what they're telling me. Is that right? Stay in the aisles. You don't come forward, that's all right. As long as we got by short of Yashiko Navariosa. Merito Rion Sarana and the Andre Contio Salambre or Cotio Sabata. What's wrong with you? What's wrong? What's you why you have to have a cane? Stand up in the name of Jesus. Phew! Hear me, church. When we get to a point in this service, you have to slip out. Nobody's going to criticize you. If you're in this service and you're not in this land, you're not required to be in this land. Or if you're here in this service and you, you can't stand long enough to be in a line, call us, let us know. We'll be there. We're not going to leave anybody out. But I believe the Lord has anointed me today with a greater anointing I've ever had in my life. I feel it, folks. But I must sure talk to you about how you must say what the Lord is telling me. Listen to me. He said, because you have prayed and I have prayed, he said he is bringing together the prayer that he said, if any two of you agree on earth. Do I have any agreement? He said, if any two of you agree on earth is touching any one thing, it will be done of the Father which is in heaven. Everybody shout amen. Amen. So altar workers help me, pastor you help me, you do whatever you want to do. I feel like this is one of these services. Years ago, everybody remember the Pensacola Revival? I used to have John Kilpatrick, he'd come at least once or twice a year with me. And we got in a service like this. He went one way and I went the other. People were, uh, we didn't have any, and, and please, this is just, I don't, I don't mean everybody's gonna fall, okay? But we had so many people falling that day, we had to open the foyer doors and put them in the foyer. What's happening? Somebody said, why do people fall out? Because once you become overwhelmed with his presence, you can't stand up. It's not me, I'm not pushing anybody down. I had a man accuse me of that. He said, I came to church, I didn't like it, I criticized you. He started walking down the center aisle and fell on his face. He said, I won't say anything, anything, anything. I'm not doing it, folks. It's not me, but I feel God in this house. I said that God is in this house. Oh yeah, whatever you feel like doing, whatever. We're gonna pray for people. There's gonna be healings, there's gonna be deliverance. Listen to me, I can't go on. Addictions are going to be broken. Addictions to illegal drugs and legal drugs. Addictions to pornography are gonna be broken. This is a breaking in the spirit. How? If you believe it, put your hands together, give him praise. So I've come to tell you he's alive. Sing. To tell you that he cries every day. So I've come to tell you that he says to shout and to proclaim he's coming back for you. So I've come to tell you he said to tell you that he cries every tear that falls.
like a mighty wind Like a mighty wind Blow through this house Open up your heavens and pour your spirit out Like a mighty wind Blow through this house Open up your heavens and pour your spirit out Let it rain, Lord Let it rain, let it rain, Lord Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. A 
of heaven let it rain let it rain Lord open the floodgates of Hey! 
fall to my knees I love you endlessly With the beauty of your son I find myself undone I love you endlessly I love you, Lord. Savior of my soul, lover of my life, I love you endlessly. Passion of my heart, everything you are. Love you endlessly. You love me before I knew of you. You love me, you love me. Now I give it back to you. You love me, you love me before I knew of you. With the beauty of your son, I find myself undone. I love you endlessly. You came and paid my price. Death has bought me life. I love you endlessly. Grace in which I stand. Everything I am, I love you endlessly. You love me, oh yeah, before I knew of you. You love me, you love me. Now I give it back to you. You love me, you love me before.
give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself So you can use me here I am here I stand Lord my life is in your hands all I want you to see your desire revealed in me. I give myself away. I give myself
myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hand. Lord, I Just now, oh, oh Lord, 
Send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. Can you give the Lord praise this morning? Why don't you clap your hands under the Lord? We're not going to dismiss this service. We're just going to say, be back at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be in prayer. Come back ready for church tonight. God bless you. Oh, Lord, sin of just now. Oh.